Earthlings, my name is Bacheva, and today we are going to be cosplaying as Jack Edwards. Why? I have absolutely no clue. If you don't know Jack Edwards, he's a booktuber who combines pop culture, existentializing in your 20s, and books in a way that is super relatable to confused 20-something postgrads like me. Because he tends to judge a lot of celebrities and their book tastes, I thought it would be really fun to judge his favorite his favorite books and judge his taste and also recommend a few books that I don't think he's ever read that I think he would also really enjoy. Also, I live in Boston, which is the book capital of America. So we're gonna go to a few places that I think he would really enjoy if he were to go visit Boston. All right, let's go. We are looking for pieces of clothes that he wears often that I can replicate in my closet. He tends to wear a lot of like girl band tees I've noticed with a lot of faces on them. He wears this pearl necklace with like ABC beads on it. What does that say? I think that just says E-Stix. I'm not buying that, but I can actually make that. I've noticed that he also wears a lot of crew neck sweater. He keeps it pretty simple, but like there's always just like one interesting thing going on like at the chest area. <laughs> this is this is way too analytical for something that does not need to be made. So it's day one. I wanted to try his crew neck look and I have quite a few options. This one, which might be a little bit too alternative for Jack, but it does have this design right at the front over here. So I'm going to prioritize that. Also the piece de resistance is this necklace that my host mom actually helped me make. And it says Eastex, just like Jack's with the little heart and the pearl beads. Also, I'm not really so sure what to do with this hair. Clearly I look exactly exactly like Jack Edwards. I also have this tote bag that I got from Shakespeare and Company from Paris. I feel like this is very on brand for Jack. I feel like he probably even has a tote bag like this. I chose this white accordion pleated skirt because it matches the tote bag. And also I feel like it's a little bit preppy, which is kind of the vibe that he gives off sometimes. I think I might put my hair up though. So I'm actually trying to wear Jack's outerwear also. I know that he has like a North Face jacket that looks like this. And then a cream scarf that looks similar to this. I didn't have a cream color, but I do have it in light blue. The first place we're heading to is a little free library. I want to exchange The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin because I would rather sit through a dentist appointment than finish this book. Open, let's see what books they have. Oh, <gasps> Insurgent. I never actually ended up reading this because it was always like a thousand people waiting list at the library. I feel like people here like modern historical retellings. There's a lot of books that kind of look similar. You see what I mean? Oh my God. I just found this Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is like one of Jack Edwards' favorite books. Okay, we're getting this one, even though Ugh, it has a sad ending. The place we're going is the Brattle Bookshop, which is, I think, the oldest bookshop in America. I'm kind of shocked that they're just having these hundred year old Rousseau's just lying around outside for five bucks. I kind of think it's kind of sacrilege. The next place that I decided to go to was Edgar Allan Poe Square because Jack is, and I quote, an Edgar Allan Ho. But honestly, what is this tiny little place? There's not even a bench to sit. Like a place where we can just like, I don't know, picnic and maybe recite the raven to our lover who we're about to break up with or something. Now that we're also in Harvard Square, I also need to show you the Harvard Bookstore. It's been around since 1932. I've actually never been inside. Oh my gosh, this place is so cool. Ignoring the part where they yelled at me for filming in here, I played a little game to see if I could find a book Jack Edwards hasn't spoken of, but would probably read. This is the book I picked out for Jack Edwards to read. It says like in this ebullient collection, virgins escape from being sacrificed, witches refuse to be burned, and every woman gets a chance to be a radioactive cockroach. A short story collection satirizing gender roles. It feels like the kind of book I would never pick up on my own, but only read after Jack raves about it, and then I'll probably hate it. So I was just going to do b-roll here, but I literally stole this seat from someone because I just wanted to look like aesthetically pleasing. Here you go. So I totally wanted to bring Norwegian wood here and read it, but obviously I forgot it at home. But it's okay. This is like literally one of my top 10 lattes like that I've ever tasted, like in Paris, in LA in New York, in Israel, literally the best latte. So I actually finished Piranesi last week. I got this literally because Jack Edwards has touted it as one of his favorite books. And to be honest, I hated it. <laughs> 
Actually, something that I've been noticing is that like Jack and I do not always have the same taste in books, which is very funny because like we both appreciate culture and depth to our literature. Piranesi is about a man who lives in a house with any number of hallways and doors, each holding something else. I cannot say anything more to this story, otherwise I will give it away, but essentially at its core, Piranesi is a story about loneliness and isolation and feeling trapped both by your surroundings and by yourself and your own identity. These are all feelings that I experienced in high school, feelings of isolation and loneliness and feeling trapped and suffocated within your own head and just fighting so hard to break out. As much as this is a brilliantly written book, I do not want to go back to the mental prisons that I worked so hard to break. And this book took me right back to my own labyrinth and I was left feeling so suffocated, a suffocation that I hadn't felt in years, which just goes to show that a book can be amazingly written and you can still hate it. A book that I have actually never seen Jack recommend that I love and I think he would love is The Elegance of the Hedgehog by Muriel Barbary. First off, this is a French translation, which I know that he would appreciate. This book is an ode to philosophy, to literature, to Parisian culture and Japanese culture. It deals with social class, cultural capital, existentialism, and the meaning of life. And it is actually the only book that is bittersweet that I will allow myself to cry to. I usually hate books that make me cry. I know Jack loves them. This book I cry to. Today, I decided to to go for more formal Jack Edwards. So we are busting out the suit for some Jackadamia. I cannot claim that joke, but that is a Jack joke. I ripped that off from his Instagram. The East Tex necklace is back. Also, if somebody can let me know down in the comments what the flip East Tex means. I tried to Google it, but I no luck. Also, I've noticed on his Instagram that Jack loves boxy crossbody bags. So I have the mother of boxy crossbody bags, this one, and it's shaped like a book. It says the book of fairy on it, and it has a little bit thing over here, and it has like some writing over here. I'm also wearing this cream knitted skirt in place of like a khaki skirt because Jack likes to match his suits. I figured like that little navy stripe over there would match the blazer. I feel like I nailed formal Jack Edwards. The only thing missing is for Jack to grow out his hair Hermione Granger style and then we can be funny. Don't talk about to check out a bookshop that I saw online. It's called I Am Books and it's just dedicated to Italian books, Italian literature. It's Italian run. I just met the owner, his name's Nicola, so nice. This is gorgeous, look at that. My one memory with this book was trying to finish this entire thing during lunch break before my English class started in high school because she was gonna quiz us on it. Sorry, I'm doing a little project. Vlogging is so awkward. Yeah, you mannequin made a cameo. So now I have a moral dilemma. I love T.S. Eliot, and The Hollow Man is like my favorite poem ever. But he was a raging anti-Semite, so then the question is, do I get the poem and then just like forget that he wrote it? Thank you. <laughs> Guys, I did get selected poems by T.S. Eliot. It's really annoying that he's such a good poet because he's such a vile human being. It's such a dilemma, like do you support vile human beings because they have good art? Or do you boycott their art even though their art is so good? You know what, I don't think T.S. Eliot would be so happy to know that me as a Jew am thriving. So you know what? That's for you T.S. Eliot. So the next book I read that is Jack's favorite is Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. Honestly, this book was mixed reviews. This book is beautifully set in Tokyo in the 60s and the descriptions of cafes in Tokyo and 60s music and just walking along campus are literally so beautiful and gorgeous. But at its core, this book is also very much about existentialism and aimlessness and directionlessness. And I honestly just can't relate to that so much. It's not something that I can connect to. It's not something that I enjoy reading about. I think because of my life trajectory, I have always had a direction and I've just always had so many obstacles getting in my way. I tend to gravitate towards books more about the underdog. I don't know Jack personally at all, but I am assuming that at some point in his life he's had some sort of existential crisis because he seems to be gravitating towards books about aimlessness and does anything actually have meaning. The first place we're going to is Goodwill because I need to find some clothes that I do not have in my closet that look like Jack's. 
first I want to find a girl band t-shirt with a lot of faces on it. Should I look in the women's section or the men's section? Okay, is it just me? Or has Jack actually said holy guacamole before? How about this Reebok one with deodorant stains on it? Ooh. I feel like all the vintage shops have gobbled up all the band tees, if you know what I mean. Why did I even think to go to Goodwill? Because I'm cheap, that's why. The next thing I want to find is his navy and red striped fleece zip up. I found these two zip ups, but they look so ugly on me that I cannot possibly bring myself to waste my money on this, you know what I mean? This is harder than it looks. I'm trying, but it's really not working. Honestly, I think I'm just gonna go back home and look at what's in my closet. Like, that's it, that's all I can do. <sighs> Okay, so that thrift shop was insanely frustrating. All I was looking for was like a girl band tee from like the 2000s and a navy blue fleece zip up and they couldn't even have that. Like if Goodwill isn't gonna have that, who's gonna have that? Luckily though, I started looking on Jack Edwards' Instagram and I found a few options that I think actually can work. So notice he actually wears some button downs with geometric patterns. So, I found a shirt in my closet that I think could work. I mean, look at this. I got it from YesStyle. It has like random hands and drawings all over this shirt and it's brown, which is like, I feel like very on brand for him. I feel like he goes more for the dark autumn, dark academia, browns, earthy tones aesthetics. And then I noticed that he wears a lot of sweater vests. So I found a sweater vest in my closet that I never actually wear because I don't think it looks that good on me. I tucked out the tails like this because I feel like he does that a lot too. And then I'm also wearing it with this accordion cream skirt. And this is kind of like a substitute for his khaki pants that I've noticed that he wears a lot. This is the full outfit. Here we go. Whoa. I don't know how to do a full length shot. Someone teach me. The next place we're going to is a place called Nuggets because I've been taking a look at Jack's Spotify playlist and the man is a lover of retro music. So I thought it would be fun to go to a record store and maybe find a record that he would listen to. refuse to accept that these are retro. So it is now nighttime and I have coerced my friend Tova to go to the Bukowski Tavern. I did not even know that there was such a thing. Do you even know who Charles Bukowski is? I have no idea. I have not read anything by Charles Bukowski and to be honest, I hadn't even heard of him until I started watching Jack's channel. But apparently Boston has a Bukowski Tavern. So we are going to check that out right now. Let's do some ASMR. Still don't like beer. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> okay, the problem is like whenever we go to bars, like nothing is kosher except for beers. So that's the only thing we can get. Let's just like look up like some of the books he's written because like I don't even know. The Tales of Ordinary Madness. Okay. You get so alone at times that it just makes sense. What matters most is how well you walk through the fire. These titles are just something. This guy was depressed. Burning in water, drowning in flame. Okay. Oof. Okay. You have to die a few times before you can really live. Actually, I feel that. I, you know, every time one of my videos tank, I die a little inside. So I just wanted to do a little records haul. I got ba -da -ba -ba a Blondie record. Okay, I got this record because I had never listened to Blondie until I started listening to Jack Edwards' Spotify playlist, and I've been especially enjoying the Blondie soundtracks that he put on there. So I got. I got myself a Blondie record. So the first book I want to talk about is Daisy Jones and the Six. Daisy Jones and the Six is written by the same woman who wrote The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and it is genuinely one of my top reads of 2022. It was phenomenal. Set in the 1970s in rock and roll Los Angeles. It's partially based off of Fleetwood Mac, and it's written in this fake documentary style about the formation of this band. For me, it like holds a special place in my heart because the 1970s was my dad's year. He moved to Los Angeles to become an actor in the 70s. Like he actually lived like near Sunset Boulevard by the Sunset Strip. So the Whiskey A Go-Go and the Viper Room and all of these places that the people in Daisy Jones and the Six would have frequented. Like I grew up around and I grew up hearing stories of. So a book that I recommend to Jack is Sarong Party Girls by Cheryl Lulian Tan. On the edge of 27, Jazzy hatches a plan for her and her best friends, Cher, Emo, and Fan. Before the year is out, the Sarong Party Girls will all have spectacular weddings to rich Ang Mo, Western expat husbands, with half-white Chanel babies. As she fervently pursues her quest to find a white husband, this bombastic yet tenderly vulnerable gold digger reveals the contentious gender politics 
politics and class tensions thrumming beneath the shiny exterior of Singapore's glamorous nightclubs and busy streets. At the outset, the frosting part of it, you think it's just like a regular chick flick novel. Like the layers start to peel back and you're like, oh, whoa, this book is about gender. Whoa, this book is about social class and race. It's also written entirely in Singlish, which is a Singaporean English slang. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this unhinged video. Please remember to dislike and unsubscribe and embrace your misfit.